How's it going everyone? I am going to make a quick tutorial. I've got many people asking me over and over how to how I import and make 3D terrain out of pictures. So this one's long coming. So here we are. Uh, so what I've done is I've got an image from uh, I play World of Tanks. And when you play the artillery, you can get top down images on stuff. So what I've done now is I've taken a screenshot because you can take your HUD off. And then I uh, I play in 4K, so I get good high quality screenshots. So then I took this into a Photoshop program and then I deleted all the terrain features that you see, like all the you know, tanks, planes, sandbags, and tents, things like that. So I just got the raw format of uh, So I'm just gonna use this tech as the texture for the map. Alright, so what I like to do is I, I hop into Blender. This is an older version, but I haven't used the newer ones and I'm afraid to because they always keep changing things and I'm too old and slow to learn stuff. And so basically what you do is you start with this basic screen here and you press A twice, which highlights all these other objects here. And you press, you can press X and delete them because you don't need that. And then when you're first downloading Blender, you want to go into File and you're going to want to go into uh, User Preferences and scroll right down, quite a ways down. And you want to enable uh, Import Image as Plane. Okay, so what you want to do at this point then is uh, press Shift A. And then you can now go into mesh and then you see at the bottom now you have a new option to say images planes. So you can click on that and then I just have mine on my desktop. All right, I got map demo PNG. You can see it's quite a large file, but it's got lots of information. All right, so what you have now at this point once you've done that is something that's not very helpful for you. So you have your plane. So what you want to do now is press N, open up this menu and scroll down. And then you want to texture solid. So you click that and press N to get rid of it. And now you can at least see your, your image here. So then you can press S to scale it up. So I like to just make it roughly the size of, just so it cuts across there. And then I also use the gizmo tool in here, the blue one, and just bring it up just a hair so I get rid of those grid lines that are cropping through it. So if I press tab, it, now it highlights the object itself. And then you can press uh, W, and go to subdivide, and then just keep going W subdivide. You gotta cut this thing up a few times. The more cuts you get, the more it can be nice and smooth. So now you got a lot of vertices you can see up top here that you have uh, however many vertices, like 4,000, 225. You can go higher if you want. It's, it's, it's just a matter of how much information you're making. So we'll do, we'll do one more. So that's starting to get pretty, pretty good now that we took it to 16,000 verts, but TTS will still handle that easily. All right, so press tab, and now it just looks nice and clean. So now you can go down over here and change this to the sculpt tool on object mode. So now you get this little pink highlighter around you. One thing that they always do is, is uh, the symmetry lock, which for some reason is always autoed on X. I guess if you're doing faces, it always mirrors what one side of the face or the other is if you're making a 3D model and sculpting. We don't need that, so shut that off. So now you have it increasing. So now you can just go over top of your model and holding down the shift button, you can move around. And then using the holding down the middle, middle wheel mouse and shift, you can pull this all around. And then, and then when you're not holding shift, it allows you to move up and down like this. So now just holding down your left mouse button, you can start to actually like just, just start raising the land up. And you can just sit there and draw away, bringing these rocks up to a, Bring this whole area up, get some height in it. So I'll just go ahead and do this for a bit. Then you can sit there and look down at the side and start seeing the elevation we're starting to get. And you just keep just keep working it. Get it to what you want. I know like most uh, professional modelers would be like, this is so unorthodox, they would be laughing at me. But this is what, uh, this is what you do when you're not a professional modeler. You sit there and you figure out little hacks to get through it all.
this is work for this works for any picture. So if you have a map of a of a D and D map or something like that, it's perfectly fine for that. You can be able to raise it all up. You know, it's how much you want to go with it. If that's not going fast enough to you, another way is you can go further away. See that now you're covering a larger area, and now this will grab this whole area and really start bringing it up faster. Of course, you could go over on the left here and play with your strength and your ra uh, radi uh, radius of the circle, but I just use the actual scroll wheel in and out and just use it that way. Then you can start really bringing it up fast. And if you're not, like, if you're in too close, that's like, picture that like as your fine detail for doing fine work. As you scroll out, it's going to give you more of a you know, get her done kind of bulk work, so to speak. And of course, you're going to want, you don't want your desert perfectly flat. You know, you can look for things like, there's some ridges here, so maybe I'll bring this whole area up a bit. But when you're in TTS, so you don't want it to go too crazy because you don't want uh, your models flopping around. You still want it nice and playable. This little ridge along here. There's nice and old. I just left these sandbags on here because I thought they were kind of cool. And then once you get some rough height that you want, then it can start scrolling in and starting to bring it into doing some more detailed stuff. It's a good spot for a little, uh, a little bit of a bump here, a bit of a valley spot. So we'll bring that bring up. Anyways, it's kind of like your, ma your map, so do what you want. It's good about it. You can get right down. You can get a good sense of what your players are going to see, how it's going to look in TTS. And I just noticed, too, if you hold down the caps lock, as I'm using it for my push to talk, it actually is a, is a negative value, so you can bring it up and down. So... Or you could also go over here, of course, and click the subtract button, and then you can put stuff down if you wanted to. Now I'm just looking for the more rougher areas to give them a little bit more bumpiness. That can be very good playable areas, but that's all right. And I deliberately chose this model with as little vegetation as possible because with TTS, I like to use the animated tree assets that are on the workshop. And then it really brings the model come to life when you have uh, trees blowing in the wind. But you gotta have something to plant them on first. All right, I think that's probably good enough. You get the general idea. So what you have now is, at the next step is you can see everything is very pixelated. All right, you wanna go from sculpt mode to object mode. And now you're gonna to wanna to go here and set the shading to smooth. That eliminates all those bumps now, all those like hard edges. 
and now you get this model is nice and it's got a lot of a lot of vertices, a lot of faces. But you can see you got a good general height map now for it. So what I what I do now is I go around and I select the outside edge of the model. So you can go down, scroll right down close, and you just uh, hold down the Alt button, and then and then right click in between two vertices on the line, and that will select that whole edge. And again, we're going to do the same thing here, holding down the Alt button, and make sure you hold down the Alt, and you have to hold down Shift as well. Because otherwise it will just select this edge and it will eliminate and it will deselect that edge. So you have to make sure you hold shift to continue selecting. So again, alt shift, right click, and then between two vertices on the outside edge. Alright, so oops. control Z is always your backup. That gets you back so you don't have to redo it all again. Okay, so what I do now is I press E because I want to extrude the model down. And I press Z because I want it to go down in a vertical fashion. So now I pull this down. So you can, and now, so that takes the whole model and just takes that whole outside edge and gives you an, an edge to your model. And now at this point, what I like to do is press uh, S for scale or size, Z for the axis. And then you press zero because you want all these vertices to all be exactly at the same level. So now it takes them all and then press your left mouse button to finish it. So now they're all perfectly flat. And once you have that all selected still like that, just press F and I'll make that a face. So now you can bring that face up because you don't need that to be a thick wedge unless you want it like that. That's up to you. So now you can see that you have if I press A to get rid of that selection. So this is how it's going to look in TTS now. So now you got a cool little model, but you can see you get the stretched edges. Whether that matters to you or not, I, it's really, it's, it's a personal preference thing. I personally don't think it really matters, but there is a way to go in now and actually retexture that, but it's a quite a bit more involved. So I think really all I, for what I'm trying to show you, all you need to do at this point now is press A twice. So you select it all, and then you press Control T you need to triangulate the model. If you do not triangulate it, you'll get things where you have problems with the um, like faces missing and you look like you see holes in the, in the models. At this point right here, you can just go up here and go file, go export, wavefront OBJ. I'm going to throw it on my desktop. I'm just going to call it demo map. And then we're just gonna hit export OBJ. Let her rip. Now if we check our desktop, we should have it. So here it is right here. Now you, you end up with two objects. MLT goes in the trash every time. You don't need it for tabletop simulator. Don't worry about it, drop it. So all you need now is your texture, your map, which is your picture, your texture, and then you have your object. So now I just go into, uh, into my uh, Dropbox. You can upload this onto the Steam Cloud, whatever you want to do. I use Dropbox because I don't know about, I have so much stuff, I don't want to worry about space and things like that causing trouble. Anyways, we're ready to go into TTS. All right, so we all know where this is. So I'm just wondering if we can go ahead and create and single player. And we can put our model right in here. So we obviously we'll go to object and components and custom. And then we insert a model. So now we go back to our file and pull up our object. So model OBJ. So if you're in Dropbox, you want to copy your Dropbox links or whatever you have it, place it in there. Another thing with Dropbox users too is you may not know if you're getting errors a lot. It's because you need to set the value to zero to one. You always default at zero. Make sure you set that to one. And the collider we want to be the exact same model. And we want it to be non-convex. And we go to material. We don't want plastic. We want it to be cardboard because we don't need a shiny terrain. We want it nice. And you can you can make it a board. 
That way it will, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Generic's fine. And now we go and we just grab our, our image there and put that as the URL, or, which is just this guy, right? And now we'll see if it works. Give it a second, chew all that info and go flying around space. And there you go. Now we got a fully 3D model. One thing TTS doesn't like though is if this board is not locked, your models are going to float across it. It starts to automatically create a larger barrier around it. I'm just going to scale it up. Lock that in place. And now you can start getting into. So I always have my little test guy. Use anybody. Yurtle's my guy. For some reason. I don't know why. But you can see now he's fully playable anywhere on here. Once we scale. Yeah, pretty good size scale map. You can place him up on the rocks or wherever. But of course, like I say, the more bumpy it is, the harder it's going to be for the models to work. Yeah, and then now is the fun part. You can get in here and start start uh, grabbing your animated foliage and things like that. Anyways, you get the idea. I guess we could throw in some sandstorm. A bit of sand. There we are. Chuck that in there. So that's just a little animation on a, on this little cube. You just chuck that in your map somewhere. There. A bit of sand, and I think that's uh, it's not polished, it was just a, a spur of the moment kind of idea. But yeah, of course, you could use this for whatever you want to do. But, anyways, I hope that helps you guys out and uh, answer some of your questions that you have how I do this.